face the crisis here that what we were taught in school, that this finite amount of water could never run out, is technically true, but if you can't access it because you took it from an aquifer and you poured it into a desert to grow cotton, or you polluted it, it's no, of no use to us, and that's what we need to get into our heads. And there's nowhere to go in the world to get away from this. Rich people and people who live in water-rich countries will get away from it longer than people who are facing it now. But the world water crisis will face us all. But if there is going to be one single thing that is going to slam us into reality, it is going to be running out of water. We see all sorts of fresh water in our lakes and say, well, you know, what's the problem? We've got lots of fresh water. Once you drain a lake, that's it. There is no more water. We have to start focusing in on what is the renewable supply which comes through the hydrologic cycle. We are creating a situation where we have less and less of that renewable supply left. And with the help of water scientists, we have to really start to assess how much water we really do have to work with. What is, what is that renewable supply and trying to define it? That's the task at hand. We must be able to find out what the limits are and how to live within them. And living somewhere like Vancouver, we sure take our water for granted yes. sometimes. There's a great documentary. We'll be having its world premiere here at the Vancouver International Film Festival. You just saw a clip of Blue Gold World Water Wars. And joining us now is the director of Blue Gold, Sam Bazo, joined by executive producer Mark Akbar. How are you both? Gentlemen, Hi, how thanks. are you? So powerful. Big subject. I'm, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be human when I watch documentaries yeah. like yours. Maybe you can give us uh, the overview. We saw some great people speaking there. But what is uh, Water Wars all about? Well, the, the crisis is that we're, we're pumping groundwater for industry for a growing population quicker than it's replenishing into the ground. And so we're, we're, we're literally, even though the same amount of water is in the cycle, there's less and less for us to use. As that happens, who owns that water, who controls it becomes really an issue. I mean, throughout history, there's been conflict over water. And what we're seeing is giant um, conglomerate corporations are buying third world countries' water supply and yeah. then starting to charge more than they pay for food and eventually there's revolutions and they and won't take it's it. It's bizarre how little we hear about this. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, uh, we get bombarded by media all the time because of the business we're in and we really don't read a lot about how this process is unfolding, this idea of ownership over this finite resource. I, I almost wish oil would run out so we can focus on this. Right, <laughs> you know, yeah. Because well, everything's been focused on that, and when we run out of that, we'll finally use solar energy that we've had for 30 we years. No water, but we run out of what? water, <laughs> we're in trouble. Well, and when you talk about water, you're talking about things like, you know, the process to refine oil, and we're using freshwater resources for all these all things. All industry, absolutely. And then um, it's not just the corporations owning it, there's also governments setting themselves up um, for the large water areas. Canada is a water rich country, Russia, and then uh, Brazil. In the film, we cover America setting up military bases in Brazil around the aquifer there. The Bush family is buying land there. Uh, for what reason? Jenna um, Bush has a nice little slice of land. There you go. Because, you know, you <laughs> need that. They must know something line. we don't know. Yeah, you need that. Now, you mentioned the word the corporation, Mark. People might recognize your name uh, as uh, one of the names behind that great documentary. What attracted you. you to working with Sam? I, first of all, I have to mention that you guys just met here at the Vancouver International in Film Festival the, yeah. in person. <laughs> True, and we've been working together almost a, a year on the on the film uh, in a kind of a virtual space through email and and uh, just a few phone calls and an exchange of uh, of DVDs. Uh, Sam approached me. Uh, he wrote to me. He was a fan of the corporation, which has a section about uh, the water wars and the, the the opening shots of the world water wars, which are happened in uh, in Bolivia. Is the story that we told. And uh, Sam was looking for uh, to find out where we got some of that footage because he also wanted to ex tell and expand on on that story. And uh, he asked if I would mind watching a rough cut of the film. And one I, thing leads uh, to I another. I agreed. <laughs> you know, I do get a lot of such requests, but I agree because it, it's certainly something of great concern. And. Right. Uh, and I saw the, a film that had, uh, you know, I, I thought a lot of potential. He's got a, a great, uh, uh, a great sort of journalistic and storytelling yeah. sense, and and also a terrific graphic sense, as you saw. Well, in, and uh, Mark, this is uh, I think one of the things that you managed uh, in your role with uh, the corporation is is taking something that for a lot of people would be 
um, very cerebral and, and maybe not something yeah. that they would automatically want to sit down and discuss and made it really understandable. Uh, so is that what you were trying to help Sam with as well, is take a really complicated subject and go, this is what you need to... Well, he was well on the way, and as much as I could, I tried to help him hone it down from, I guess it was around a two hour or more yeah. cut when we when we started it's now just it's now a very tight yeah. sort of rat -tat -tat kind of uh, 90 I mean, minutes to take this this huge subject and that really affects every single person that lives on this earth and condense it into 90 minutes yeah, and try and get people to understand the issues you're kind of saying well mexico doesn't get covered here you know you're, <laughs> right. you're, you're, you're ignoring a lot of people yeah mark's first email to me had like four pages of notes and i agreed with all of them so i knew i had a good partner going there so right. um it was actually actually pretty easy once you make the cuts and you see that it's working that the story's still coming across what is set. not easy when one is uh, approaching a documentary is getting money to do so now yeah. how yeah. was that process for you I hear you maxed out your credit cards lost some yeah. funding the night before filming and you, yet you forged ahead tell us a little bit about that well, I, I'm, I have a narrative background with short films and screenwriting, and, and uh, one of the other executive producers, Cy Litvinoff, he uh, produced The Man Who Fell to Earth, which was a sci-fi about David Bowie, alien coming here to get our water. Yeah. And we were writing a sequel to that, and he found the book Blue Gold. And um, when I read it, I, I honestly I thought it was scarier than anything we were writing, you know, and it was happening now. And like you said, why don't we know about this? And I'd won a camera from a short film contest uh, kept from Kevin Spacey. You had uh, won, you had won you a, camera a camera from Kevin yeah. Spacey. Yeah, I won a camera from <laughs> Kevin Spacey. And so I said, I have a camera. I have his book. I called the authors, and they uh, they were you know excited we saw about Maud it. Barlow in the clip. Yes, She's been on the Maud show before. and Tony Clark will be here for the premiere tomorrow. Yeah. Tony will. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and so I said, I have to do this. And I did get an investor interested, a friend. And uh, so I st once, I, once I got that promise, I started maxing out credit cards because I had to follow the authors around the world. And I started getting tickets and the rest of the equipment. And yeah, the night before, uh, there was a family emergency and pulled out everything. So I thought I was going to, I thought I was just going to refund everything and get it back. But I mean, honestly, I, I have a three, I have a six-year-old now. He was three, four at the time. Yeah. And, uh, it was night, and I went out, and he was uh, he was up. I said, "What do you have a dream or what?" And he goes, "No, I'm thirsty." I said, "I'm thirsty," and I um. I just got chills. I know. <laughs> I got him water, and I um. I just didn't tell my wife. I just went to bed. I was you know, and I just woke up and drove to the Grand Canyon and started Good shooting. Started shooting. And yeah. Mark, started why, the process. I yeah. mean, that's such an amazing story. But and for apparently, Doc he still hasn't told his wife. I haven't. She still doesn't know. She here in town. No, she'll she's, never she's, see she's, us in California. I know. <laughs> but Mark, why why documentaries? I mean, what what Sam just said is so powerful. Is that what drives you forward to help out people like Sam and give them guidance? Well, truth is stranger than fiction, you know, and it's so pretty. True. It's a strange world out there, and uh, and as as forcefully as we can tell these very real stories, I, you know, people need. To hear him, not that there isn't a role for fiction to, you know. The, yeah, but we're scary just, enough as human it's beings. Just not, <laughs> it, it's just not where my career path uh, and talents led me. So I, uh, uh, there's so many stories uh, to tell, and they're all so urgent. And and as I've learned with my past work, you can really have quite an impact. Make a difference on, a, on an enormous audience, and really make a difference. Well, we're in honored people's to have lives. the world premiere here in Vancouver, you guys. Congratulations oh, yeah, on the movie yeah, tomorrow you. night. You'll want to get your tickets in advance because I'm sure it's going to sell out. Blue Gold World Water Wars will be premiering tomorrow night, uh, and uh, that's at 7:15 p.m. And then we'll have another screening on the 10th of October. You can go to the VIF website to find out more information. Guys, thank you for scaring the oh, hell out of me, you. but also <laughs> <laughs> telling you. a great story. By the way, well. this Here's is mine. Uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> 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 Cheers Still to the free. movie. Cheers. We're going to take a break, and when we return, we've got um, some pets that need homes. Eileen Drever is here from the SPCA, so don't go away.